Now we'll take a look at clock underscore zero one dot pi. Having the current time in the Unix epic format is a good start, but it's not very helpful. It doesn't tell me whether I have to get ready to head out to meet my friend or not. I have to do some more conversion to get to where I can make decisions like that. So we need to make some improvements, make some changes. There is online and many Epic and Unix timestamp converters. These, this number of seconds is also called a timestamp very often. And these websites provide a helpful way to conveniently convert from a timestamp to a human readable date. Here's one that I like that I use for this purpose. It's nice because you can see what the current Unix time is. You can read it off as it takes over. You can also copy and paste any timestamp you have and get out a human readable date and see what it is. So for instance, we can go to our output. If we run clock zero zero, we can copy and paste the output, put it here and run it. And we can see, oh, look, here's exactly the month, the day, the year, the hour, the minute, the second that this timestamp represents. So that's very useful. And if you ever run across a date and you need to do just a quick conversion on a timestamp or two, this is a great way to do it. Unfortunately, this is not a great way. If you have a clock that's spitting out timestamps, you don't want to have to go and copy and paste to figure out what it's telling you each time. Luckily, you don't have to. If we go back to our time package, we can do a little bit more reading through the functions that are available to us. One in particular is useful in getting human readable dates and times. Instead of using time.time, .time, we can do time.ctime. So convert a timestamp. That's what that C is short for. The signature that it shows here, the way to use the function, is shorthand for package is time, the function is called ctime, and you have the parentheses after it. The square brackets say that this argument, seconds, you can put, but you don't have to. If you do put it, then it'll convert whatever timestamp you give it to a date and time. If you don't put it, it'll just use the current date and time on your computer, the current timestamp. And then it'll take that output and it'll give it to you in a form of day of the week, month, written out, day of the month, hour, minute, second, and year. So a very natural way to read out this date. This is cool. This becomes a lot more useful than getting a timestamp as an output. And now that we've gone and done the work, we can go back to our function and in clock 01, instead of calling time dot time to get our right now, we can call time dot C time. And we don't provide the number of seconds. So it'll automatically go to our computer and look for what timestamp it thinks it is right now. Use that timestamp, convert it to get a nice human readable date. And when we run it, we see exactly what we'd hoped. Day of the week, month, day of the month, hour, minute, second, year. Very nice to interpret. Now we know what time it is and we know whether we need to leave now to get ready for our two o'clock appointment. This is a big step in the right direction. This is a good time to call out the difference here. Before time dot time returned a float. So it returned a floating point number. C time returns a string. Strings and floats are fundamentally different in how they're represented on the computer. The fact that we can print them both and look at them is nice. And under the hood, the print function handles them separately. So in order to get us that nice picture, but 
it's worth calling out that to the computer, these are as different as apples and oranges. A string is, you can think of it as a list of individual characters. So here in the C time documentation where it says sun, June 20, there's a capital S, a lowercase u, lowercase n, a space, which is its own character, capital J, lowercase u, lowercase n, space, a two, a zero. And these confusingly are the character numeral two and the character numeral zero. And these individual characters then are stacked together in a list or a string of characters to form something that looks like text to us. We'll play with this a little bit more. Um, and for us, thankfully, Python does a lot of work, so we don't have to worry about exactly inside the computer what combination of ones and zeros goes into making these uh, be what they are. But it is helpful to remember that strings and floats and integers are all different to the computer because some functions want an integer and some want a string and some want a float. So we'll have to keep that in mind. These different types of information are called types. Type is a special word in computer languages, and it means that there are different, qualitatively different pieces of information. We can go back and run our program again a couple more times just to see the seconds increment just a little bit, and that's very satisfying to see it work. So now we're getting close to having what could be a nice little clock.